Hey everybody, this is Brian with Techies and we have Riley over here and we have a common problem that happens all the time. Um, we have these B450 motherboards that come in with 5th gen Ryzen processors and you get all your new gear, you do your custom build and bam, you get no video and it doesn't work. You're like, what the heck, is something wrong? So today Riley is going to teach us what to do and how to fix this situation. So why don't you kind of explain what you're going to do and then we'll get jump into it. Okay. Well, first of all, to diagnose the problem, the problem here is that um, these uh, B450 boards came out before these fifth gen processors. So they need an update to be, become compatible with these new processors. Um, and some boards are prepared for that. They'll have what is known as um, BIOS flashback, which lets you flash the BIOS on the board without the CPU in it. But unfortunately on cheaper boards like this one, there is no BIOS flashback port. Usually one of these ports will be labeled as uh, flashback compatible if it's possible. So what do you do in this case? Well, in this case, you need a compatible CPU. <clears throat> so we're gonna have to temporarily switch the CPU out in order to update the BIOS. Um, we've got a third gen right here. We checked that this board is compatible with third gen out of the box. All right, so let's mm -hmm. get started. What are we, what's the first? Do you want to show them what's happening now yeah. currently, actually? Yeah, actually, that's a great idea. All right, so he's going to put a beautiful RTX video card in here. You can imagine how worried the customer was, you know. All right, especially after finding that hard to get card. Ooh. Yeah, you know wondering if, you know, oh no, something wrong with the card? No, not in this case. Just a compatibility issue. All right, so here we go. All right, so now we're gonna jump the, jump the power uh, the motherboard. And he's doing this on the header pins right here. Yep, find the two that are labeled power switch and just short them together. And boom, you see that the fans come on. Everything looks normal, but, but no, video. no video. We have an HDMI cord going to the monitor, but we're not getting any video and obviously it's working. So, what do we do now, Riley? Now we switch the processor. Okay, so power. is usually local local places like Micro Center. You can take your board and processor back to them and they'll help you out. If not, you come to Techies, we'll be glad to help you guys out. Mm -hmm. If you're nearby. <laughs> and you can mail in also. Mm -hmm. It is always a good idea to make sure when, I'm assuming he ordered these parts online and didn't, didn't know uh, if the BIOS up on this board was up to date. Because a lot of the times, you know, these boards could have been made a year or two ago. You know, and they still got their old BIOS on them. So it's a good idea to check. Listings a lot of times will list if the BIOS has been updated. I know Newegg will tell you. So you guys can see a Ryzen 5th gen. So now Riley's gonna put in the third gen in real quick. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I have the option to be able to do this, but yes, I have a few mail and repairs and you can bring them to the store and we can definitely help you with this if you guys can't do this on your own. Look at that, and it recognizes the different processor now. 
And you can see the fifth gen Ryzen right there. So, uh, third. Third gen, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're gonna go into the BIOS and he's gonna walk us through. No keyboards to connect it, so he's good. All right, so now we're in the BIOS right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're gonna wanna have your BIOS downloaded from the motherboard's manufacturer's website mm -hmm. ahead of time on USB drive. Plug your USB drive into one of the points. Let's side. Not all the BIOS is in the same place when it comes to the Easy Flash tool. This one's F7. Well, I'm F7 to get into advanced uh, mode, and then usually under tool or near the end here, we got Asus Easy Flash. Oh, and some Asus boards, you can actually just connect the board to the internet. So now we have the correct flash drive in there, and the ROM file is up in the flash utility. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go gonna ask us hit, hit yes from uh, August so or, wait no it's well it's from last year before the before the new processors came out yep so you can see that. that's the date over there I was talking about and then here's the date of the BIOS we're flashing that's from February 1st 21 and you can see the progress right there We'll give it a few minutes and then we'll switch the CPUs back. As soon as it comes out, we'll... Yeah, and you can see it's the new BIOS version. So now Riley's going to shut it down, take it apart, and switch over the processor back to the original one. And we'll show you guys that it works. Me the first boot. It's going to take a minute the first time because it's going to recognize the new processor. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can just pop the CMOS battery. It'll probably give us a message too about the new processor. All right. So, you hear the beeps right there. All right, recognize it. Now, you're going to get video. And here we go. And just booting back up. And this is on the newer gem processor. You can see that it's changed now. And, oh, and it said new new CPU, so it realized. And there we go. So now you can see it's on the new version, new CPU, and look, it works now. It works. So there you go. So try this at home. If you can't do it at home, you can send it in to us or mail in to us, and we'll be glad to help you guys. And with that video, hit the like and smash the uh, subscribe button down there, and check out notifications for our next upcoming video. Thank you.